You know, it has been a week since the attempt to bomb Times Square, and the fact that the suspect, Fazal Shahzad, is a U.S. citizen has put the Muslim American community on guard. In fact, some worry this latest terrorist act will increase law enforcement scrutiny and strain relationships with their non-Muslim neighbors. Earlier, I spoke with three Muslim American leaders, and I asked them how the events of last weekend have affected them. You know, Don, it's a great question, and um, I remember thinking, here we go again, after it was revealed that this guy was a Muslim. And I remember thinking, I'd rather, if something like this is going to happen, I'm glad it's happening in New York, because A, we don't scare. Uh, you know, it makes me really proud to be a New Yorker. But B, I think we handle ourselves so well after September 11th that while everybody across other parts of the country are calling out for profiling of Muslims, as though you can tell a Muslim by sight, in New York, things have just gone back to normal. That's what I was going to say. Before I so, get to my other guests, you, know, you, you, sort of, you sort of touched on a little bit what I was going to say. You know, um, many times you hear, and it's the honest truth, uh, if someone does something wrong or does a bad deed, and African Americans will go, oh my gosh, I hope they're not black when the picture comes up on television. You've heard this before. Uh, what did you think? <laughs> yes, up to you. Did you go, oh, I hope this guy isn't Muslim? I, you know, I really hoped, I remember when the first stories were coming out, people were saying, oh, maybe it's a white guy, maybe it's a Tea Party guy. Um, and you think, well, why is anybody attacking New York in the first place? It doesn't matter what the reasons are. Uh, but, of course, you know, you sort of hope that it isn't somebody that will ident be identified with you. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to also think about the strong, very strong racial component to a lot of the discussion that's going on. Yeah. You know, a third of all Muslims in America are African American, as, uh, you know, as you said, you know. Uh how many people are going around saying, oh, here's a black man? Yeah, so let me, let me get over. to I, I want to get to Sumaya. Did you, you have, did you have the same thought? Do you feel that way when you heard about the bombing at all, when you hear about any incident that involves a te terrorist Absolutely, intentions? absolutely. It's the same mindset. Hope it's not a Muslim, you know, like hope it's not an African American. Um, but at the same time, it really upset me in terms of um, the sense of insecurity that we have as a country right now. Um, what's going to happen next? And whether it's, it's a Muslim, it's a, it's a Christian, it's, it's anybody, it's that sense of insecurity. And we all need to work together as a nation um, to work on, on bringing back the sense of security that we have been missing in this country for a while now. Mm -hmm. we, uh, you know, I want to ask um, Arsalan this. You know, we've, heard, we've had several things, and it was uh, Muslim Americans like the time, you know, the Times Square, the alleged bomber. Uh, the suspect, the army psychiatrist uh, that we saw at, at Fort Hood and all of that in the shooting, Nadal Hassan. There's also Adam Gadan, born here, a known member of Al-Qaeda. So uh, what do you think of this, that, you know, the terrorists coming from outside of the country, but now it seems that they're maybe coming from people who, have, who were either born here or were naturalized citizens. Does that, ha does that have an effect on the Muslim American community? Well, I think it does, Don. I think another important thing to keep in mind is that terrorism knows no race or religion. You know, we remember a few months ago when a white man named Joe Stack flew his single-engine airplane into the IRS building in Austin, Texas. Now, we didn't hear anybody call it an act of domestic terrorism, but I assure you if it was a brown man named Ali Muhammad who had flown his plane into an IRS building, we would have probably shut down every other IRS building in the country. And so there is a double standard here when it comes to acts of extremism committed by uh, you know, white men or uh, committed by brown Muslim people. Something else important to keep in mind, and I think your viewers... Wait, wait, uh, before you go that, I'll, make you, I'll let you make your other point, but I want you, why do you think it's a double standard? Well, again, you know, I, I think that the, the term terrorism, sadly, within our public discourse has been co-opted uh, to apply only to brown Muslim people, you know, and I think that that, uh, like I said, if the IRS uh, plane attacker had been a brown Muslim man, I think that we would have, you know, heard resounding calls, uh, you know, for it to be called an act of terrorism. But since it was a white guy named Joe Stack, we never heard the term domestic terrorism being used uh, to classify it. And, you know, I know we've done stories, Arsalan, and maybe, you know, in the broader context, in the broader media, that may have happened. But here we talked about that subject at CNN, and we also have used that term domestic terrorism uh, when it comes to Timothy McVeigh. Right. Well, and, and, and the, the Oklahoma City bombing from April 1995 is a perfect example, as you point out. You know, everybody talks about racial profiling in this post-9-11 world. Uh, you know, after Oklahoma City, we didn't go out and, and racially profile every white, white guy with a buzz cut, uh, you know, who may have been a former member of the Army. And so, 
you know, this whole racial profiling debate, which has, you know, recently been exemplified by the whole Arizona immigration debacle, you know, really applies to people of color in America. And, and I think that double standard needs to be pointed out. Mm -hmm. And I cut you off a little bit earlier. I just want to make sure you make your point because I think this is a very important subject that we need to talk about here. Did you make your point when, uh, with the question that I asked? Uh, I did. What I was trying to say, Don, is that, you know, people, uh, Americans, your viewers need to understand that, Ameri uh, that American Muslims are as part and parcel of American society as anyone else. You know, people tend to forget that the greatest athlete ever, Muhammad Ali, and the funniest dude in America, Dave Chappelle, are both Muslims. And so, you know, uh, American Muslims have made as many contributions to American society as any other demographic group. I'm going to let Sumaya jump in because she's, she's nodding her head at what you're saying. Um, do you agree with what he's saying? Absolutely. And, you know, the situation that we had not too long ago with the Michigan militia, uh, I don't believe right. they were called terrorists at all. So it is a double standard that we see, maybe not across all uh, news outlets, but definitely the majority of them.